Hello and welcome to worship today at Good Shepherd's Lutheran Church as we gather together to sing our Lord's praises and take comfort in his promises. Today we're celebrating the Day of Ascension, the Festival of Ascension, when our Lord Jesus visibly ascended into the heavens in full view of his disciples. But as we celebrate this festival, Ascension is not just about us marking the day where Jesus ended his earthly ministry and went into heaven. Ascension is a time for us to remember the promises that Jesus has ascended to the right hand of God. He rules all things for the good of his church. And we get to rejoice in this because especially at a time like we have right now, it's all the more poignant that we realize Jesus controls all things for our good, the good of his church. And we're going to look at that today. Um, Our order of service you can find online in PDF form on our website. And we'll open with our opening hymn, hymn 173. May the Spirit of God richly bless our worship today. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And And also also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Well, praise our God using words from Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord Most High the great king over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, 
peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended amid shouts of joy. The Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, King of glory, on this day you ascended far above the heavens, and at God's right hand you rule the nations. Leave us not alone, we pray, but grant us the spirit of truth, that at your command and by your power we may be your witnesses in all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. For our first lesson, we hear God's word recorded for us in Acts chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. Uh, Luke, the writer here in Acts, begins this book by recounting Jesus' ascension into heaven. The disciples had been with Jesus for three years. They had been with him for 40 days after his resurrection. But they were still holding on to this earthly notion of a Messiah who would bring worldly power. And so Jesus told them about the power that they would receive right as he ascended. The power they would receive was spiritual, to free people from their sins. That is the great power God has given to all of us, that our sins are removed and we are God's people for eternity. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back, in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of God. We'll continue by singing the first stanza of hymn number 169. <laughs> The lesson is recorded in Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 44. The gospel writer Luke here writes about Jesus' ascension again. A number of things we can grab from it. But in particular, I want you to remember the, the picture that we're left with Jesus. Luke tells us that as he was blessing them, the last time anybody ever saw Jesus on earth, 
He was blessing his people. What a beautiful picture that is for us. For that's what he has always done, what he continues to do, and what he will always do for us in the future. Jesus wants us to picture him as one who came to bless us. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that, was, that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised. But stay, into the, stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the gospel of our Lord. We'll now join together in the first four stanzas of hymn number 171, A Hymn of Glory, Let Us Sing.
Jesus, uphold me, that I might uplift thee. Amen. Your brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, our risen and ascended Lord. What is the most memorable gift you've ever received? Not necessarily the best gift you've ever received, but the most memorable. See, I know my answer right off the cuff. It was December 1989. For those of you who remember, 1989 was the year that Tim Burton's masterpiece, Batman, came out. I was too young, so I was not allowed to go see that movie, but I remember the whole year all I wanted was the Batmobile and matching Batman from that movie. And on Christmas 1989, that's exactly what I got. You'll be pleased to know I still have them. They are still in my house. And I'll never forget it. It was the most memorable present I've ever received simply because I had waited so long for it and I was so excited about it. How about you? What's the most memorable gift you've ever gotten? You know, thinking along this track, I started this past week thinking in the opposite direction. What's a gift I'll never receive? What's a gift that I will never have put into my hand? And at least one of the answers that came to mind is my own death certificate. I'll never receive that. I will never have my own death certificate put into my hand for obvious reasons. I will be gone and on my way to heaven by that point when they're filling it out. But I'm never going to receive that. Neither will you. That's not really a gift any of us want, right? Why would we want that? Well, dear friends in Christ Jesus, today we get to see our amazing God and that he gave us the most amazing gift ever. The truth is the greatest gift you've ever received is your own death certificate. It's exactly what God gave you, your own death certificate. And because of that, because we've already died, we are set free to set our hearts and our minds on things above. That is what Paul, by inspiration of the Spirit, is going to talk to us about today. Now today we celebrate the festival of ascension. We're focusing on ascension. The day that Jesus visibly ascended in front of his disciples into heaven. But that doesn't mean he's not still with us. In fact, if you look at the account of the ascension at the end of the book of Matthew, one of the last things Jesus says to the disciples is, surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So though Jesus has ascended, he is still with us. And the reason I'm hammering that point right now is because unfortunately there are many Christians even today who mistakenly believe that Jesus, as true man, because a human being can only be in one spot, As true man, when he ascended to the right hand of God, he's not present with us here anymore. He has an apartment or something at the right hand of God. That's a mistaken belief. As Jesus himself said, I am with you always to the very end of the age. No, the point of ascension, what Jesus did when he ascended into heaven, was this was the end of him being present with us in a visible way. This was the end of his visible presence on earth when he lived here. In ascension, Jesus, true God and true man, has been exalted to the right hand of God. He rules all things. As it says in Ephesians, he fills all things. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. He is present everywhere. He rules all things, exercising total divine authority over the affairs of this world. We just can't see that. You could ask yourself a question right here, as I've asked myself, is why did God do it that way? In the history of salvation, why on Ascension Day did Jesus do it this way? So that he's still present with us, but we can't see him. I've mentioned this in sermons before, but I'll say it again because it's an important wish. You know, we all wish that Jesus could be present with us in a way that we could see him. I can think of a million situations right now where that would be beneficial for me to turn and see my Lord with me. 
So what's he doing? As the ascended Lord at the right hand of God, what's he doing? Well, that's what Paul's writing about in our very brief text for today. The relationship that we as the children of God have to our ascended Lord. I'm going to read those verses very quickly. Paul writes, Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So what is Jesus doing as our ascended Lord at the right hand of God? Well, based on Scripture and what Paul's talking about here, at the right hand of God, ruler of all things, the first thing Jesus is doing right now is he's giving gifts to the church. He's giving gifts to his beloved bride. You know, at this time of year in these past weeks, we've had call day at New Ulm in Minnesota, call day at the seminary in Mequon, where young men and women are saying, here am I. I want to go forth and teach God's little ones. I want to go forth and shepherd God's flock. Where do you think these gifts are coming from? Or even here at Good Shepherds, the gifts of preaching or encouraging or serving or helping, being there for each other. Where are these gifts coming from? Who's putting them under the tree? The ascended Lord is. He has ascended on high, as Ephesians 4 says, to give gifts to his beloved bride, the church. It's the first thing that our ascended Lord is doing. The second thing he's doing is he's ruling all things. Not just the ruler of the church, but he is the ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth, again, for the good of his church. And that is an especially important point to realize right now. Because you look around right now during this COVID thing, and we're at the point now where what you're seeing is a lot of infighting, a lot of political fighting, a lot of mindsets clashing in America and around the world. And you look at that, and the comfort we have as Christians is to know in the midst of this mess, God is still ruling all things for the good of the church. That's us. I can't think of a time more recently in my life where that truth is more poignant for me than right now. The third thing that he is doing, the risen and ascended Lord at the right hand of the Father, present everywhere, the third thing he's doing is he's setting your mind on things above. Which is no easy trick. But day by day, your Savior is setting your mind on things above. Now, what Paul means with that phrase, to set your mind on things above, set your heart on things above, that passage, you know, sometimes we read it and we sort of think of just happy things. You know, set our minds on happy things like clouds or angels' wings or dove feathers or a rose petal on the wind. But that's not what Paul's talking about. Set your mind on things above. Paul himself explains what he means because the very next sentence is, you died and your life is, is hidden in Christ. What Paul means when he says, set your mind, set your heart on things above, is he's saying that the fulfillment of every purpose or desire or wish that you have for your existence, the, the, the joy, the, the life that you have, any desire that you have that you want to, total, to bring to total fulfillment of your life, all of this doesn't exist down here anymore. It doesn't exist down here anymore. The fulfillment of all those things are with Jesus, whatever it may be. If it's, your, if it's the joy or pleasure or safety or an end to compulsion or contentment, whatever it is that you go for as a goal in your life, as a goal of your existence that you want, it's not here anymore. It's with Jesus. So you set your heart and your mind on Jesus because he's the one who has that all. The truth, dear friends, that you cannot get 
the fulfillment of these things down here anymore. It's with Jesus. So we set our hearts on things above, on our Savior. Send it to the right hand of God. Now it's easy to say, but it's not easy to do. For the truth of the matter is that though Paul says, you know, set your heart on things above, focus on your Savior, we still live down here. And we live surrounded by earthly things. And the intrinsic truth of this fallen world is that it is filled to the brim with false promises. Just filled with false promises. And it hurls these things at us all the time. And again, you can choose whichever positive concept you want. For instance, let's take safety. Safety. During a time like this, you know, obviously we, we want to listen to recommendations and the guidelines that our governing bodies or medical experts are giving because it gives us a measure of safety. But as a Christian, what I have to understand is that can I ever actually get the fulfillment of safety down here? No, I can't. They're not going to give it to me. There's no government on earth that can give me the fulfillment of personal safety. They can give me a little bit of safety, but not the total thing. Only Jesus Christ can give that to me. And yet the world gives these false promises, like if you just do this, well, then you'll get that total safety. No, you won't. Do the same thing with anything, pleasure or joy. How many times does the world spin us with false promises about what's going to make us happy or what's going to bring us pleasure? And we chase after it and we end up with pain instead because the total fulfillment of your joy is no longer present in this world. And when you listen to the false promises about that, you're going to end up with pain. And yet in our sin, dear friends, the truth of the matter, and we all have to admit it, is that we've done that. We've been taken in by these false promises and we've ended up chasing after Earthly things, the exact thing Paul tells us not to do here. Setting our minds on earthly things, thinking that down here is where we can get the total fulfillment of everything we want, including our very life. And dear friends in Christ, that is bad news because God is very clear in the scriptures about what he does to people who do that. People who turn this world into an idol and go after it for what they want. God's very clear about that. The, pun the penalty for that kind of idolatry is hell and death. And yet, dear friends, right now, I'd like to remind you of the greatest and most memorable gift God ever put into your hand. Your own death certificate. Because you already died. See, as true as everything we just said is, as true as it is that all of us, because of our sins, deserve death and hell, well, it's also true that that's exactly what God gave you. He gave it to you already. He gave you your personal death certificate because you already died. You've already died for your sins. You've already been beaten for your sins. You've already been crushed. You've already been crucified for your sins. It happened when Jesus was crucified. That's your death certificate. And the miracle of grace that when God looked at Jesus on the cross, he saw you. It was your sins being punished. It was you being killed for your sins. And Jesus was taking that all onto himself. And in the waters of baptism, God brought that to fulfillment in your life because he gave you your own death certificate. In his eyes, you have died. Your sins have already been punished. They've already been wiped away. God has already vented all his anger onto Jesus for your sins. There isn't any left. The gift of our death certificate, which means that we're now set free to set our minds on things above. Are you seeing the beauty of what Paul's saying here? 
Because I already died with Jesus. I already died to sin. I already died to this world. I've died already. My life is no longer here. It must be someplace else. It's with Jesus. So that's where I set my heart. Because that's where my life, my eternal life is. With the one who won it for me. With the blood of Christ, you're set free. To set your mind on things above. Because you already died. And your life is hidden with Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters in our ascended Lord, seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, ruling all things, present in all things, controlling all things for the good of his church. You have already died. Now we can set our hearts and minds on things above. There are still things to do, things to have in this world, according to God's good grace, but we get to set our minds on things above. For we died, and our life is hidden with Christ. And as Paul says, when Christ, who is our life, appears, we will also appear with him in glory. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in true faith, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We now respond with our next hymn. together in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Lord Jesus Christ, great champion of our salvation, we praise you for ascending to heaven after your stunning victory over sin, Satan, and the grave. We praise you for completing your Father's rescue plan and for receiving from him all authority and in, in heaven and on earth. Assure us each day, because you live and reign, our sins are forgiven, life is worth living, and death holds no terrors for us. 
Lord Jesus, the living head of the church, we praise you for gathering us around your good news to be joined to you and united with one another. We praise you for the many dedicated servants of the word who proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins to people from all nations, also to us. Equip us to be instruments of your peace in our time and in our place. Open our mouths to speak your good news and change our lives so that we reflect the beauty of the teachings of God, our Savior, in everything we do. Lord Jesus, mighty judge of the universe, we praise you for your promise that you will return to our world, not as a humble servant, but in full majesty, to take us to live with you. We praise you for the certainty of your promises and the justice of your judgments. Prepare us for the day when you will come again. Give us hearts that trust you more fully, hands eager to serve you, ears open to the music of your gospel, and lips to speak the truth of your love. Keep us devoted to our common tasks in this life, yet keep our minds on things above, where our life is hidden with you, so that when you appear, we too will appear with you in glory. Lord God, we give you thanks with Peter Heikinen and his family that you have granted him recovery from COVID-19. You are the, the good shepherd, the great physician who watches over your people. And so with hearts of joy, we thank you for what you have done in the life of Peter. We mourn, O oh Lord, with the family of Patricia Kleist, who has been taken from this life to be in heaven. And so while we mourn her loss, we give thanks to you for the great gracious victory that you have given to her through faith. May the comfort and assurance that she is now gathered to, to be with you in heaven comfort her family and dry their tears with the certain hope that they will be reunited with their loved one in the glory of heaven. And finally, Lord, as our congregation prepares to join for public worship together again, we ask you to keep us safe. Give us patience to work together and concern for others. May we once again appreciate the gift of fellowship that we share with you and that we share with one another. And now hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Lord Jesus Christ, hear us, for you have ascended to intercede before the Father on our behalf. We, pre we present all these requests in your name, O Lord. Amen. And let us join in the prayer our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation, and bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We will conclude by singing, from, singing hymn number 170, Draw Us to Thee.
again, there's two announcements today that I would like to take a little bit of time to highlight. First off, due to the changing conditions, our God in His mercy and grace has allowed it that next Sunday, May 31st, we will be worshiping here at Good Shepherds. Certainly going to be a very joyous occasion. However, there's a few things that um, are going to be a little bit different, at least for the time being. Uh, number one, it'll be same service time, 7.45, 9.15, and 10.45, and also Monday night. However, we're going to try and keep our numbers within a certain range. So we would ask out of Christian love if next week between 9 and 4, uh, Tuesday to Friday, if you could please call in and let us know which service you would like to attend. It's going to be a little bit different these first couple weeks as we get the ball rolling again. And there's going to be things that are kind of uncomfortable. But out of Christian love, we not only want to be able to gather together, but to also be safe and to show love to each other. So again, please, if you are able to, uh, give us a call next week between Tuesday, Friday, 9 to 4, to let us know which service you would like to attend. Also, on Wednesday, May 27th, again next week, we'll be having a blood drive uh, in the school's gymnasium. Uh, there's a PDF online where you're able to get more information to sign up for that. And with that, may the Lord give you richest blessings during this week. Mm -hmm.